Zaglemic first cemented his spot as the top SM64 runner in late 2011 with his 120 star run of 1 hour, 47 minutes, and 10 seconds. Toppling Japanese runner Honey, Zaglemic now held the record. It was at this point Zaglemic's stream began to take off, becoming one of the most watched on Justin TV. He quickly distinguished himself from other runners, improving the record faster than anyone could keep up with. On April 23rd, 2014, Zaglemic would get the world's first 143. Alright, 143. That's it. He was truly the undisputed king of Super Mario 64. The run itself was quite the accomplishment, taking three years of practice to perfect, but this run was also important because Siglemic would never beat it. He began to drift away from SM64 as new runners began to catch up, and months later his time was beaten by Punkation. The king had been toppled, but Siglemic's 143 would still go down as one of the most important speedruns of its day. Let's take a step back and relax. And this blindfolded run will come to me. Blindfolded speedruns are nothing new, but there is one run which stands out as the most impressive of the bunch. In June 2015, Pangea Pango would become the first person to complete Super Mario World blindfolded. The memorization, timing, and duration made this unlike any other run. This run received huge media attention, and it is the most viewed blindfolded speedrun ever. Got him! The term Tool Assisted Speedrun was first used in the late 90s when a runner named Arikin released a version of Doom which allowed you to record gameplay in slow motion and then play it back in real time. This made it much easier to get a faster time, but it wasn't until 2003 that we saw the first modern TAS. Someone named Morimoto released a speedrun of Super Mario Bros. 3, completing the game in 11 minutes and 3 seconds. This was the first major TAS that utilized single frame advancing and save states. Because this was among the first of its kind, many people saw this as illegitimate and cheating. It wasn't just significant because of its ingenuity, it inspired BizQuit to create TaskVideos.org, the largest database of tool-assisted speedruns to this day. The GoldenEye community is among the oldest in speedrunning. This is likely due to the in-game timer making speed an obvious objective. The game times each level individually, which is why this game is generally run in segments. This has caused times to have gotten very optimized and very fast. People have taken months or years just to shave off one more second. December 2013, Ryan Lockwood, GoldenEye Runner, got through streets in 1 minute, 12 seconds, beating his personal best by 2 seconds and tying Mark Rutsu for the world record. This run became famous not just for its insanity, but also for one of the best pop-offs in speedrun history. Yeah, it's this one. Right here, it's this one! Right here, this is the 112. Right here, yes! Dude, what a rush! What a rush! Look at that, see how fast my pace is? Right in the fucking head! Yeah! Got a fucking 112, baby! That's right, you see that clutchness? I am fucking clutch! Look at this fucking line I take. I'm like, yeah, baby! Let's fucking do this! I wait, I wait, I wait! Right when he starts firing, they try to back boost me, the double. Body armor. Two quick ones, I already know I'm getting there on the perfect line. Look at the fucking pace! 50, 49, 47, baby! That's fucking right! That's fucking it! I'm fucking pumped watching this one again. I waited the cinema too, because I said, oh my god, it might be 112. And it fucking is! It fucking is, baby! Yeah! Dude, I fucking just got streets once. Yes! I fucking did it! That's right! I skipped 113. I'm a legend. I am a fucking legend. I'm a fucking legend. Yes! I am a fucking legend. Of course Ocarina of Time had to be on the list. I had a hard time deciding since this game constantly has so many amazing moments, but I ultimately decided there was one run that not only brought in new inspiration, but marked a turning point for speedrunning as a whole. And that run is Cosmo, now Narcissa writes, 2238 Ocarina of Time Any% percent Run. This run wasn't impressive gameplay wise, the commentary is what made it special. Perhaps the most insightful run of its time. I can't tell you how many people I personally know who started speedrunning because of this single run. This was the year speedrunning really began to catch on. It's no coincidence that Games Done Quick grew more in 2013 than any other year. And, at least for me personally, it's this run that signified speedrunning's break from the underground into the mainstream. 
sequence to like catch stuff in bottles, <laughs> which would write stuff into your inventory. And you would write the lullaby, which lets you get the magic. Then you'd write the medallions, and then you'd also write a quiver. And so with those items, uh, you could shoot the light arrow at Ganondorf to defeat Ganondorf and then get to the end of the game. And like for a really long time, we were like, that's it, man. Like, there's no way we can <laughs> there's no way we can break this game anymore. There's a bottleneck at Ganondorf. Like you have to <laughs> like you have to get past Ganondorf, so you need light arrows with magic, usable magic, and a quiver with arrows. So like there's nothing else you can do.